Uh, Luke, uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's talk about a hugely significant win on, on Saturday to, to keep the momentum going and the confidence high in the, uh, in the Notts County camp. A, a great day. Yeah, yeah. All, all the games are, you know, that every single game is so important. And, um, you know, the more, the more we win, the more we want to try to maintain that. And, of course, uh, we know that the opposition, um, certain teams are going to, are going to be be equally as uh, impressive and and win a lot of games. So we have to just keep going. Yeah, and uh, four different well, four goals, four different goal scorers as well. And it's important to share those goals amongst the entire squad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the more um, uh, so many defenders concentrating so much on on Maka, um, and I think it's it's creating opportunities more. Um, you know, on the, on the edge of the box, maybe that we we didn't get so many before. Um, but certainly, we, we're seeing um, you know close attention for Mecca. But I mean, look, I think I think he had a couple of openings himself as well um, that he could have scored. But it's great to see so many players chipping in with the goals. Yeah, uh, one of them came from uh, Conor Rawlinson on the edge of the uh, 18-yard box. Notice Carl Cameron's tried that a couple of times uh, on the edge of the penalty area. It's not quite worked out for him so far this season. But how important is it to sort of allow those players to to venture forward at the right moments to try to try and get a goal? Yeah, I think the most important thing is that um, the guys are in the correct position defensively to try and stop counter attacks. And then, if you know, if the ball falls to you that high up the pitch and you feel like you have the power in your legs and you know there's a there's an opening, then of course you can you can shoot. And and Connell done that done that brilliantly. It was very much like a, the way he passes the ball, very assured, very firm with the inside of the foot. It was a re- it was a really good goal. Yeah, strikers finish. Uh, some might say. Uh, let's talk about Ruben Rodriguez. Uh, scored from the spot. Uh, important as well for him personally after the penalty miss uh, the other week. Just how important was it that he that he picked the ball up and, and took it away from twelve yards just to get that confidence back? Yeah, we. I think we all had no doubt he was going to pick the ball up um, because we know how confident he is and how brave he is. But then I must admit I held my breath because I was very very keen for him to score. You know, if he doesn't score, maybe he starts to have a a little bit of doubt, but then, you know, he dispatched it with no no hesitation at all. So that, that was that was great. That was brilliant. Yeah, important as well from from his mental from his mental state to to not get too low. It, had, had he missed it? No, that's it. I think that you know he's brave enough to step up again and take one so soon after he missed one. Um, and yeah, I was I was more anxious than I would normally be because I didn't want him to suffer like to start to doubt himself at all, but. He, he, he didn't look like he had any hesitation in him at all. Yeah. How was he after uh, after Saturday? He spoke uh, with, with Charlie Postmatch, said he, he came off with a bit of tiredness. Um, and uh, again, it, it takes a lot to drag Ruben Rodriguez off the uh, off the field of play. How, how's he doing at the moment? And could he be fit for tomorrow? Yeah, I think I think the, the, the amount of work that he does, he's, he's very evident just watching the game. And um, he's repeating that game in, game out. Um, really high intensity pressure on the, on the opposition. High intensity actions uh, forward with the ball to try and create create the opening. Sorry, <clears throat> and um, of course that that takes its toll after a number of games. And he felt some tightness in the hamstring. And we have quality to replace, uh, you know, players when 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 they begin to suffer like that. And it, and and it was the right thing to do at that time. Yeah, yeah, important as as well for you as the as the head coach when when a player does say look. I, I don't feel right. I don't. I probably shouldn't continue. How important is that that they that they tell you and the staff that they do come off? Because of course, naturally, a lot of players will think, "Well, I'll just run it off, or I should be fine for the next bit." But that could lead to a, to a lengthy injury. Yeah, it's true. And and uh, I made a point of, of of mentioning that after the game to all the players that um, Ruben had, had, had given everything for the team and uh, was honest enough to to tell me that he was feeling something. I think that. Um, you know he he can be on the pitch and just try to uh, not make these explosive actions, but Ruben understands that if you're on the pitch, you have to play with that you know the full intensity. Otherwise, it's not going to be fair on everybody else. And and that was that showed a huge maturity from him, really. Yeah, uh, Bromley on Tuesday, uh, another game under the lights at Meadow Lane. How much are you looking forward to that one? Yeah, cannot wait. You know we we we've um we've been enjoying the experience of playing. Under the lights with with the fans there, um, I expect the, you know the pitch is going to be immaculate like always, and um, the atmosphere should be 
should be good. And and again, as always, we just need to create the 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 moments for everyone to get excited about, and the rest will you know will follow. Yeah, we mentioned it before to me. Uh, it's the people that make Meadow Lane special, the fans that. Uh, pay their money week in and week out to come down and watch it. And at the moment, your your team are, are, are responding to that with some great performances on the pitch and results as well. Yeah, we 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 are aware of um, we are aware of the commitment of the fans, and um, we're aware that the the club is um, has suffered a lot in recent years, and it would be understandable if the fans didn't turn up. But they they love the the club. Um, that's very very clear, and. Um, the least we can do is try every single thing we can do every day to to improve performance, to you know, to get better at getting the ball back and get better at going forward to create good chances. And um, at, at this moment, we're in a good place, and I, I'm sure the fans can recognise that. Yeah, you, you mentioned it as well um, after the uh, after the game at the weekend that, that you need to improve in some areas, despite winning four nil at home, which brilliant performance and a great result. But there's there's still things that you say you want to do better. What what are those things in particular? What well, the game became uh, more end to end than it needed to be. We missed some big opportunities to make the game calmer and still be able to build up and create chances. But we uh, we lost our balance a little bit, and there was a few moments where we ran back to to, to our to our own goal, and uh, the numbers were not really great. You know, almost even numbers running back to our goal, and uh, we managed to defend the actions very well but I think the team are more capable when they're in that position where the scoreline gives them a buffer and a, an opportunity to control every single action I think they're good enough now to, to do that I think mentally they have to be engaged and although it's very very challenging very tough to create angles all the time to move the ball all the time it's um, you know it's, it's a very intense style of play um, but I, I think the players are, are capable of doing that and they can make the, the end stage of the game better. Um, so that and one or two other bits that probably I don't want to reveal too much um, that we spoke about as a team that we can we can do better at, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, very finally, uh, Bromley come to Meadow Lane uh, tomorrow night uh, off the back of three uh, straight defeats. What are you expecting from them? Well, I, I think both teams um, have have a... A gap before their, their their following fixture, the players will be prepared to really really work very very hard because they know there is a rest coming. You know, so the last lap of a race, you know, you have a little bit of energy to sprint um, when the bell goes in. And we, I think it's a scenario maybe that can play out like that. That um, both teams will will be aware that there is a a bit of a break coming and that they can really push very 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 hard. I think that uh, Bromley are clearly a very, very good team. I don't, I don't think that you know the, the the current form is a really good reflection because um, there's a lot of players are still in the starting lineup in the squad that that won the trophy uh, last season, if I'm not mistaken. And watching them, they have very, very good players in certain positions, particularly key players. So I expect the game to be very, very competitive. I expect two teams with 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 energy again to to be on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine so. Thanks very much for your time, Luke. All the best for tomorrow. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. Over to you, Wally. Hi, Luke. Um, I was just doing some doing some research for a piece, and um, of the forty goal, forty four goals that you've scored this season, only three um, have been from headers. Um, obviously, it's not. It's not determining you, uh, like anything negative because you're scoring at free will at the minute. Um, but is it an area that you've identified with uh, Ryan Harley as, as something that you could potentially improve on? Yeah, I think so. I think it, it's. Uh, I really think it's a case of um, a lot of our entries into the box from a wide area uh, um, have been hit very low, um, low and hard across the often and try to to cross the ball behind the defensive line um i don't i don't feel like particularly there's a problem with people um having the quality to head balls into the goal or having the, the desire i think they're the two most important things is first to you know to to be prepared to head the ball i don't think we have a problem secondly i, I i'm sure we don't have a problem with the quality 
I think it's more about the the type of um, delivery that we're seeing. So often uh, we're trying to breach the, the line. Often we find ourselves on the inside channel of the box and, uh, you know, hitting the ball very hard across the ground or cut back. So I, I don't I don't worry too much about that. If, as you quite rightly said, it, if, you know, if we weren't converting many goals, I think would be something that would be more alarming. Or if we were crossing the ball plenty of times in the air and uh, failing to convert. But I think, you know, Chicks had one uh, the other night um, that, that maybe maybe can be headed in. I think also the, the, the fact of the matter is that players are generally better, more accurate with their feet than they are with their, with their heads. So if we can find people's feet, I always feel more comfortable that they can hit the ball early or, you know, they can manipulate the ball, make a touch or something like that. So... Yeah, it's not not a big concern. And then, uh, sort of sticking with set pieces, uh, Connell's goal on um, on Saturday was eventually fell to him from another cleverly worked uh, free kick. Has there been an emphasis on that in training, just to sort of create different openings? We saw it at Wildstone with Ruben passing the ball out to uh, Chicks for his first goal, and then we saw it at Wrexham as well. Has there been an emphasis on creating different different like avenues uh, to enter the box? from free kicks rather than just swinging the ball in. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, I think when, when you do put the ball, of course, it's a, it's a big threat um, when you put the ball inside the box in the air or, or what have you. But um, typically, they're, they're, not, they're not too too likely to, to com- be converted in, in, in football in general. Um, but we, we also understand that if you can make box entries with a ball at feet, the chances are much higher. So... Um, you know, Wheelie has been has been incredible. You know, he's come up with some brilliant set plays, and you know, he runs through with the players and gives them small details when when they practice to change it to help the guys to be more successful. And then, of course, the big big ultimately is the players with having the quality to deliver on the pitch. Um, but I'm pleased with with our creativity from from dead balls around the box for sure. Yeah, uh, Richard Brindley uh, available for you tomorrow after his suspension following his red card at Wealdstone. But you've got Aidan Baldwin back as well and put in a really good performance, a clean sheet on Saturday. How is, because you mentioned uh, post-match about Aidan and you're just going to see how he feels ahead of the game. Um, how is he feeling after Saturday? Yeah, I think there's some, uh, natural. naturally there's some soreness in there because he returned to play fairly quickly, you know, after quite a long layoff. Um but he came through training without a problem, and of course tomorrow he'll be he'll be less sore. Um, so you know, Brins is a, a brilliant, brilliant footballer, and um, you know we're, we're we're very fortunate to have you know four guys there to to pick from, and of course we know Badge can play there as well. So you know, very very fortunate, and very happy with that with that problem. And then just a final one for me. Um... You mentioned after the game as well that Connell um, took a little bit of a knock in the first half from a challenge. Um, is he uh, available for tomorrow? Is it still a little bit of a sore one from Saturday? Yeah, again, I think that he'll be available. Um, there is some soreness, but it's not like so much that he's, he's stopping him from taking part in training today. And again, we I would like to think he'd be in better condition tomorrow as well. So we have good, you know, we have a good good options there. Nice one. Thanks, Luke. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Ollie. Take care. Thanks, Ollie. Not TV. You've got seven minutes. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Hi, Luke. Nice to meet you. You too. Uh, you are undefeated at Meadow uh, Lane in the league this year. How much of that do you put down to the fans and just how important have they been in helping the team this year? I think, first of all, uh, the players. The players are the most important aspect. And secondly, for sure, is the, the fans, without a doubt. Um, and I think both 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 sets of people are working well together. Um, I'm I'm trying to always to to reinforce to the to the players that you know the fans are are here, but we have to we have to deliver for them because it's very difficult to to whip up excitement when there's nothing happening in front of you. It's very very difficult. So the players have to you know have to be on the front foot, and then. The fans have been incredible, brilliant. Tomorrow night will mark your fifth game, and I believe it's 16 days, which is, of course, a very tough schedule at any level of the football pyramid. How do 
do you manage the squad? How do you rotate the squad? How difficult has that been? And can we expect any rotation tomorrow night? Yeah, it's been it's been very challenging for the group, but so far we're seeing a very good output um, from them. So um, we're fortunate because you know you look at um, uh, say Sam Austin, you know he scored two goals in the FA Cup and he's such a excellent player. We know that we can rely on Sam and Kevin Castro was out the out of the squad for a while and came in and his performance was very good and he scored a good goal and very nearly put Macker in for what would have been a, a, a good assist and worked his position brilliantly. So we're, we're fortunate there. Cairo, of course, we know Cairo has added um, huge energy and, and scored important goals for us as well. So we we have the opportunity to change players um, in and out of the team, but at the moment with a very heavy schedule and a, a team quite settled really, um, a lot of the same players taken to the field in, in this period that you just described and making a really good output. So we try to judge like different performance parameters to see where we are and uh, it's been a very good return. Of course the squad is in fantastic form at the moment. Tomorrow is a chance to make it eight uh, league wins in a row and you are top of the league is that something that you don't look into too much is it just about taking it a game at a time at the moment of course still early in the season what's your approach to the league table at the moment yeah that's that's it you know we we know that uh, we're like one third of the way through the season nobody ever won the league and after one third is impossible so um, we have to concentrate trying to make everybody understand the importance of their their role in the team and the and the role in the squad and the 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 performance levels that, that are expected we have to everyone has to understand that and then we we have a good chance to continue to you know put in a good performance on a match day and try to win the game um of course there comes a time when when hopefully we can look more more at the teams around us and have a you know an idea of how important their results will be but at the moment no we just we have to concentrate on performing well and try to win every game. Just a final question from me. Obviously, your answer there is something you hear a lot of managers say about taking it a game at a time and not getting too carried away with the league table. Obviously, with the players, it might be different. How do you keep your players grounded and how do you remind them to just focus on the game at a time? What's your approach to that? Uh, I mean, it, it's it's no. there's no easy answer to that. I think that... Um, it's difficult to train a lot to work the players very, very hard with this amount of games so close together. Um, but anything we cannot do on the pitch, we try to do in the in in the meeting room. And um, I think one of the the key things for us as a group is try and um, whatever the result of the game, try to be honest about how we performed. And uh, if if we won a game, but there was problems in there, and we we let ourselves down in certain aspects, I think we as a group have been good at reflecting on that and hopefully that that lets the players know that not everything is perfect and that at times we we maybe got away with an action that we should have we should have been better with or at times maybe we squandered an opportunity that we we should have converted so we, we if we look at things in in that way then people can realize that there's more to do and we we not everything is perfect